Welcome back to Wizardry, Bane of the Cosmic Forge. For the rest of this Let's Play, what I'm going to be doing is providing some music for you. Uh, feel free to comment on uh, which music from which games I'm playing. I'll be borrowing them from other games because this game has no music. Makes it kind of boring, so I decided to throw in my own. Alright, if you remember last time, I went ahead and made my own party. Um, at least six characters, so I'm going to assemble my party really quick and start this adventure. Uh, so what I'm going to do... Our Valkyrie that we made last time, I went ahead and named Aladra, and there she is. She's going to be party member number one. Krask, our uh, Dragon Monk, is going to be number two. Syl, our Elf Thief, number three. Lily, our Fairy Alchemist. Wendell, our Gnome Mage. And I went ahead and changed um, what I had last time. I, I can't remember. It was a Bishop something. I don't remember the race, but I went ahead and made a Fairy Bard instead. Now, the reason is because uh, I thought about it a little bit more, and I was like, starting off with a bishop is not a good idea. It's too difficult to start with a bishop. So I'm going to start with a bard in hopes that class changing to a lord later and then a bishop finally. So then I'll be able to use both the mage class, the mage spellbook, and the priest spellbook um, effectively by the time I get the bishop. So then I won't have to spend so much time getting new spells. Let's embark on our adventure. Some stunning graphics. It read there for a moment that uh, it says that we'll know that we can be able to turn back out even if things get too hairy. But you can hear the gate closing behind us. And unfortunately, we won't be able to come back this way for the rest of the game. Alright, so the very first thing that we want to do as soon as we get into the castle is equip our characters because they are all naked. They brought their clothes, they just didn't want to wear them inside. Too embarrassed. You equip characters by reviewing them, clicking the equip, and then following the <laughs> whatever they have in their inventory to, um, to put on. Equip uh, our thief. Equip our alchemist. Uh, sometimes you can put things like stink bombs in your secondary hand, or your left hand, or whatever. Um, but I prefer not to do that. For Syl, she's, she's going to be eventually attacking twice in a turn. And so the second time she'll attack, she'll use the dirk. Uh, at the beginning of the game, though, she won't be doing that. Didn't finish. Let's equip Wendell. Um, now these three characters in the back, besides Zinzin, Zin, who's starting with the sling and bullet stones, won't be able to attack with their staff. Staffs are a short range weapon, so Lily and Wendell will not be able to attack unless I find them a extended weapon, which is like a staff, like a, like a bow staff, a long staff, um, or a long range weapon, which would be like um, a bow or a sling, as in the case of Zinzin. Zin. Go ahead and save. And what you'll want to do when you're playing this game is save very frequently. I'm going to try to refrain from saving just to uh, save on time, but I recommend that you save before every door because it's likely that you'll die very much, very much in this game. Especially if one of your characters dies, that's kind of a big deal. So what I would recommend is just saving often, and so then if someone dies, you can just restart. Now, I'm not necessarily going to do that. If someone in my party dies, I'm going to kind of tough it out and stick with it. And hopefully that won't get me screwed, but we'll see. Now, the very first thing I want to do, I'm going to back up to where I was, so you can see how I got where I was. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just explore the rooms that are in this area very first. I can do that. Um, now, I, I can check the, the door to see if it's locked. Ow. Definitely locked. I bumped my head right into it just trying to get in. So, now, how do I open it? choose the open option and then it gives me further options. I can either force this door door open or I can pick it. Force uh, is a roll dependent on your strength. So if I have a high strength, I have a high probability of forcing this door open. That's only effective at the early part of the game. Later on, the doors will be so heavy that you won't be able to force them open. It doesn't matter what your strength is. So picking is what you want to, to do because when you pick a door open, 
with your Skulldudgery skill, for example, my Thief has that skill, when you pick a door, then it gives it gives um, them bonuses to... It essentially builds that stat. So let's go ahead and try to pick this door with Sill. And here we just click as soon as we want to try to open it. I failed. If you fail too many times, you'll jam the door, so let's hope that doesn't happen. There we go. Finally got it open on the third try. Let's go in and fight our monster. Ran into two rats. So here's our battle option. As soon as we run into some monsters, then we start fighting them. So, um, now, for Elaidra, she doesn't have any magic. So I choose spell and there's nothing there. Um, I want to fight, and she only she has a spear which only has one fight option, which is thrust. But uh, Krask, for example, will have two fight options, which is thrust and bash. And if you check out the manual, you can tell you'll be able to find out what the difference is. I usually just pick the first one; it doesn't necessarily matter. Bash, however, does give you bonuses depending on what your strength is. So maybe if you have a really strong character who has a bash item, choose bash; you'll do more damage. I'll have Sill fight, get everybody to fight who can. Now Lily can't fight because she, her weapon is short range and she's in the back. Um, so, but Lily does know a few spells. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the sleep spell, and it automatically chooses what group because there's only one group. Wendell also has some spells. He doesn't. He can't attack close combat, but he can cast some spells. And I'm going to fight with Zinzin. And everyone kind of does their actions, whatever you told them to do. And, lucky enough, all of the monsters died right away, and now we can continue on with our adventure. Some explanation of what's in this room. Basically, all of these first rooms are not going to have anything in them. They're just uh, old, decaying rooms of the once majestic castle that stood here. And now we're exploring its dark and hallowed skeleton. Hallowed, probably not the correct word. That's okay. And we can see a chest right in front of us. Let's go check it out. So you're like, how do I open this chest? Again, the open command gives you a chest menu. You don't want to just go ahead and open it. Okay? Every chest in this game, but three of them, are going to be trapped. Um, including this one. So let's uh, inspect it. What you want to do is have your thief take a look at it. You can have other characters take a look at it to kind of give you a, an idea of maybe other um, options uh, that, it, that the trap could be. What, what it, inspecting does is it gives you a few letters over here um, that talk about what the trap is. So this trap has the letters P, O, and E in it, but it doesn't have a Y or a J in it. And this is scrambled, so you don't really know like how it's set up in the trap, or where the letters are in the trap. So let's uh, try to disarm it. We'll pick disarm off with Sill. Now, this is probably... Uh, it could be either one. I, on every time I get to this selection screen, I always forget what the letters were. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Poison Dagger. Ah, oh, I guess wrong. Elijah dies. Oh, no one else died. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that was very, very unfortunate and probably a very dumb mistake on my part. Our, all our friends are dead. What a jittery day. Go ahead and take this equipment. And I won't go into detail what that equipment is. Can worry about that another day. Now, there's an item that you can get right away that lets you resurrect your characters. You can use it a set number of times. I believe it's six or seven times. And it's right over here in this chest. Now, you may be confused as to where I am. How am I finding my way around? Um, what you can do, what I highly recommend doing, is when you play through an area, make a map and make it yourself. So, like when you step in a square, draw out where the walls are, draw out where the doors are, you know, whatever you can find. Um, the reason is because that, that helps you not only explore every part of the map, but it also helps you to memorize what the map layout is. You can go online and look at some maps, but I would highly recommend just making your own. So this is how I found my way here, because I know exactly where it is. Neatly inscribed upon the metal face of the chest are the words, Open me first. There's a chest right behind me that says, Open me second. It doesn't matter which one I open first. However, the equipment in the second chest, the Open me second chest, will change depending on which one I open first and which one I open second. This Open me first chest is just the same stuff every time. Now, what I can do... Um, what, what will happen if I open the 
second chest second, which, in other words, if I follow the instructions, I'll get a sword, which I would prefer. If I open the second chest first, then I get a staff, which isn't as effective in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one. This chest is not trapped. It is one of the few. Oh, Elijah's dead. She can't open it. It is one of the few that is not trapped. All right. And it gives me this equipment. Basically a lot of healing items. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give them to my alchemist, just so I can keep track. It doesn't matter who you give them to, all characters can you use any items equally well. Um, Alright, let's use the Amulet of Life, which has a set number of charges, which you can find out by identifying the item, but we don't know just by looking at it. I'm going to bring Elijah back to life, and I'm going to... Use it one more time on Zin Zin. Bring Zin Zin back to life. Alright. So now we're all beat up <laughs> because we let that trap go off. Um, let's rest. What you want to do is rest probably after every battle at least to let your mana points build up if you use mana. Um, uh, but also, this first bar is your health and this second bar is your stamina. Uh, your stamina will recover very quickly when you rest. Your health will not. Uh, it'll take several resting cycles to get your health back to where it was. It's a lot faster just to use healing spells because your mana regenerates a lot faster than your health does. So I'm going to uh, pick the spell option on Lily because we gave her the ability to heal wounds. We're going to go ahead and heal Zin Zin's because it looks like he's the farthest behind. And then we rest another time. Resting is kind of dangerous in this game. In fact, what I would do, and I'm not doing because I'm, I don't care, but what I would do if I were you is rest every or save every time you rest. Uh, the reason is because you can get ambushed and your characters will be asleep. Most of them will be asleep when, um, and you'll run into a battle. Happens pretty often. Uh, where was I? Spell. Let's try to heal again. Get them up to most mostly healed up. Aledra. Okay, she's good. Rest a few more times. I think we're probably good. So let's continue on. Uh, open this chest. And I already know this one's not not trapped. You can inspect it and it'll say that it's not trapped. The Sword of Striking. It's a pretty decent sword early on. In fact, you'll probably use this sword for most of the beginning of the game. Uh, because it has it has a higher chance to attack and it does a pretty decent amount of damage. I'm going to hang on to it. It's a good sword. And now I'm going to go back to these doors that were in this other room and open the rest of them. And hopefully, there aren't any more chests, so hopefully I won't die from at least just the monsters. Alright, let's try to open this. Have my thief pick the door. Fail. Let's try again. Also fail. Don't get jammed. Ah. Come on. And I jammed it. As soon as uh, this never turns green, one of them will always just sit on red. That's when it's jammed. Now, so what What we do now is we can uh, either open it with a key, open it with a, with a spell called Knock Knock, which lets you open doors. It's it's kind of like picking it, but it's a, it's a spell. Um, I can't get in this door, so I'm gonna just walk away for now. Another thing that I would recommend is saving before you try to open doors because if you jam a door sometimes that's kind of a big deal. Early on it's not so much of a big deal but it does kind of... it is somewhat disappointing. So then you can restart the save if you accidentally jam a door. And I don't want to jam this one either. Come on. There we go. And we will go in for the battle. Two more rats. Take these fools out. Uh, one thing I can do is build my ninjutsu by hiding in battle. That'll make it slowly go up the more I use it. Uh, hiding makes it so that you can't be targeted by attacks. Um, some mass target attacks will still hit you, but uh, hiding is very effective, especially if your whole party can hide. Now, I don't necessarily... It, it's sort of hard to do a build like that, but it is really effective by the end game if all of your party members can just disappear. Um... And I'm going to just have Krask hide. Syl can hide too because she's a thief. She'll disappear. Uh, Lily, let's cast our spell. She cannot attack. Let's put these rats to sleep. 
and Wendell can also cast a spell. Now you may be wondering about these dice. The higher level you get, the more powerful you can uh, cast the spell. So this will be twice as effective, three times as effective, etc. Um, I can only pick level one for now. Um, Zinzin, uh, as a bard, can also use ninjutsu to hide, so I'll build that skill while I can. They're asleep. Zinzin fails at hiding. But Sil succeeds. Krask succeeds as well. Now, if they are hidden, it doesn't show up here. Usually a status effect will show up right by their OK or on their OK slot. Um, in this game, it doesn't tell you when they're hidden. But you can tell when they're hidden because you don't have the option to hide anymore. So, that's how I know. When you're hidden, you can also attack for double the damage, which is pretty nice. Not only that, but you can also attack in close combat from wherever you are and attacking whoever you want. Normally, you can only attack close combat from the front to the front two rows of monsters, but um, if the people in the back can hide, they can also attack in close combat. Got another spell with Lily. All I've got right now, though, left is heal wounds. So I'll go ahead and try to heal Syl. She's the one I'm kind of more worried about than Kresk, the, dra the Dracon. Uh, Wendell has one more spell left, too. I'm going to have him cast Chilling Touch on this rat. And Zinzin Zin will just fight, because I don't want to have him do anything else. And Zinzin Zin finishes him off before anyone else can do anything. Way to go. All right, and again, nothing in here. I could search the room. Uh, what I would do is I would step into a space and press search, found nothing. Step into this space, search, nothing. Doesn't matter which direction you're facing most of the time, but um, but if you're in the space you can search and then see if there's anything there. So I'm gonna, so there's one more door that I can try to open. I guess I'll try to open it just to build my lock picking skill. And that is so open come in here and it's just totally empty no monsters well at least I got a little bit of a bonus lock picking seal all right so this video is about 18 minutes let's see is there anything else I want to do whoops uh, let's talk a little bit about these fountains sometimes on a wall you'll see a fountain like this one right here it'll it'll give you the menu to to drink up um, this is really dangerous uh, later on in the dungeon there's a lot of fountains that will poison you however there are some in the in the very in the later areas that will heal your health this one it's refreshing meaning that all it's doing is it's it's healing your stamina some of them will also heal your spell points so just check like what it's doing <laughs> uh, it's save before each one because because it'll say um, poisoned or something if if you do get poisoned some of them will have even worse effects um, so stamina I don't really need that stamina's not critical so I'm just gonna go elsewhere. Uh, let's hurry up and open these doors and we'll quit for now. Have Syl try to crack this one. Alright, failed that time. Ah, and I already jammed it. Okay, that's not a big deal. Again, these first doors, they're not they're not really important. They're more just for experience. But, uh, let's try this one. Alright, here we go. There it is. Alright, let's see what's in here. Behind door number one! Ah, more rats? You guys gotta see some different monsters. Alright, let's take these guys out. Just as fast as we can. Everyone will fight. Except you. You'll sleep. <laughs> Put them to sleep. Not not go to sleep. And Zinzin Zin is a bard. And bards can use... Oh, what? Bards can use items. I picked run. Uh, called instruments for example a loot is a special item that only a bard can use and this is essentially like casting sleep um i'll just use it just because he can Ow. got hit by one of the rats and they're asleep got one of the rats with an energy blast again now when a monster is asleep you do double damage to it and it's also twice as easy to hit the monster which i mean i suppose would be it makes sense S little description of the room could take a look around. Let's open this door. Is it locked? No. Okay. Let's open this up. Alright, Syl. You failed. Try again? Uh, come on now. Last chance. Probably. Yep, it's jammed. Let's try this other one behind us. Oh 
man. It's like I see all the green, and then as soon as I stop it, all red. What's up with that? There we go. And nothing in here. I think... If I search in here... Nothing. Okay. Well, that is the crash course on the very beginning, the very, very, very beginning of this game. We've only scratched the surface, haven't even leveled up once. Um, so, I mean, just from the looks of it, this game may not be too exciting. And it may be a little bit weird and a little bit confusing. But I can tell you that it gets much more exciting later on. We start diving a little bit into the story, find out what's happening to this castle, find out where the king is, find out where the queen is, what happened to them and leveling up like crazy and getting all kinds of bonuses and getting all kinds of magic and, oh man i love this game please stay tuned i hope that you enjoyed this as much as i have and have a good one